So I'm here at the 9-11 Memorial with Anne Van Hine. And Anne, what do you do here? I am a volunteer with the 9-11 Tribute Museum, and I've been leading tours for them since 2006. This memorial plaza did not open until the 10th anniversary, 2011. So since then, we've been on this memorial, and I lead tours. Um, before COVID, I had led 500 tours. <laughs> It's a few less now, but uh, getting back into it. Oh, that's great. And what surprises people most when you're giving tours? Um, well, they, they're in a way very surprised about that all the buildings here were destroyed, you know, just from that physical point. But then they also many times say, I can't believe you can come here. I can't believe you can tell this story without crying and whatever. My husband, Bruce, was a New York City firefighter. He was in a squad, Squad 41. So on that day, as I heard all the things happening, I always knew he would be here. Uh, members of, the, of a squad are highly trained firefighters, so I knew that he would be here. And the fire department came to my home around midnight to tell me he was unaccounted for. And my daughters and I embarked on a journey we never expected to be on, having a personal loss in the midst of an international tragedy and um, they would find Bruce's body in March of 2002 I would be invited here to see his body be carried out I said um, no because there are some images I cannot have in my head and my daughters and I have always known from the moment that you know Bruce died he was with the Lord and that's what we hold on to we also don't consider Bruce's death to have been taken. His life wasn't taken by someone. He laid his life down. He was a New York City firefighter doing his job. And um, we know that's the way he thought, and that's the way my daughters and I have chosen to think of it. So he died in the line of duty. And the memorial behind us is the ramp where all of that was taking place. Right. Right, so there was the ramp. It would have the ramp would have been here, and that's where they uh, carried would have carried his body out. Um, I knew that his body was covered by an American flag. I have that flag, and his body was carried out by firefighters from Squad 41. Um, you know, the fire department and all those here in those days after the attacks did their best to bring. People, you know, some kind of closure by having bodies, but there's still 40% of all families have never had any human remains. So we have to remember that too, that, you know, those, there's very open scars for some people. Sure, sure. But many times I've said to people, it's actually harder for me to go to Bruce's firehouse because in a way I don't think of him as here. Of course my face, you know, I know where he is. But I have to say, through the years, this has become a very special place to, for me, and I do feel close to him when I'm here. But I just believe in the importance of um, teaching about September 11th and sharing those stories. And um, why should we remember? Here we are 20 years later. Why should we be remembering that day? You know, um, it's, it's difficult for me in a way to see it as anything but the day my husband died in the line of duty, but I do because I understand that it really was the first time um, that the mainland of the United States was attacked, right? It, and we were all, just all really caught off guard. I think especially now that there is a generation that was not alive. I always say when I talk to students that to all the grown-ups in the room, it's still current event. Right, every grown up knows exactly where they were. But anybody under the age of 25, even though it's only the 20th anniversary, but they don't have their own memory. And um, I think when things pass into the history books, I, I know as a kid, like I grew up, my mom grew up during World War II. I always thought of World War II as being so long before, before I was born. And then the reality of, wow, World War II ended 10 years before I was born. Like, that's not a long time. Of course, those people were still dealing with stuff, and the world was trying to get back to itself. And that's the same thing with September 11th, right? Like, kids are going to think, wow, 20, like, that's so long. 
course, as you get older, you know, time has a different thing. But it's just every person listed on the, these two pools um, has a story. And it's important that we remember those stories. And from the standpoint of a believer in Jesus, the Bible tells us to tell the next generation the praiseworthy deeds of our Lord. And um, there are praiseworthy deeds that need to be remembered and mentioned and and not just the deeds in the Bible, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, those are all, we, we need those, we yeah. need to know those, but the ones in people's personal lives, because really nobody can argue with your personal story. They can argue with facts and everything else, but they can't argue with your story. And that's the part I think that will attract people. So, so Anne, this is going out to Intercessors for America. So you've got a lot of, of prayer warriors watching yes. right now. Would you lead us in prayer for those families, for your family, for the nation? Let me pray for your family. Okay. Uh, because, Lord, I know um, every year this comes back again. And I just thank you for Anne and how she has represented you and how you were her rock during that time and you were the rock for her daughters and lord i thank you that you have been so present in their lives i thank you for all the opportunities you've given to Anne to speak about this in america and also in japan uh father after their 311 when they were suffering i thank you and pray even now that those seeds planted would be watered and grow into kingdom growth, Father, in Japan. Even right now, as the Olympics are going on, we pray people would be talking about that time that woman came from America and told her story. And Father, um, I just pray that, uh, that Anne's daughters would, and their children, Lord, would grow up knowing that you are the rock, that even on the darkest days, you are there for us. In Jesus' name, amen. And Anne, why don't you lead in a prayer for the nation and, and the other families? Well, thank you. Uh, Lord, as another September 11th anniversary rolls around, you know the very hairs on everyone's head that still grieves and has post-traumatic stress and all that, Lord. You know everything about each of those people. And Lord, I just pray that they would realize that you are right next to them you have always been there lord that you love them that you want to direct their lives lord but lord that you are a gentleman and you will not walk in unless they invite you so lord i just pray for all those people that i know all those people that i don't know all those people that were in the buildings and live downtown here those that lost loved ones those that volunteered with wonderful organizations like the salvation army and the red cross lord i just pray as this 20th anniversary approaches lord that they would be able to reflect on how they saw you they may not have known it was you at the time but now lord just quicken their hearts and minds to know that you were ever present that you were weeping with them that you are holding them just as you held emily megan and i and lord i pray that the seeds that have been planted lord just i i remember so vividly when i came here on september 28th and stood on the corner of liberty and west street and that um, nypd chaplain prayed the lord's prayer and read the 23rd psalm lord and what came to mind for me was lord that your word would not return void so lord i just stand on that that your word will not return void and that many many will come to know you i praise you and thank you in jesus name amen amen and now for a little bit of a spoiler alert <laughs> So, Anne, do you remember the first time we spoke? Yes, you called, and you said you were doing a one-man show that was going to include Bruce, and you were asking me about him, and you wanted to know if we had any video, and we had one tiny little snippet that I could give you <laughs> that you have done phenomenally to use it. You really have. And then you were asking about his morning routine, and... For theatrical purposes, we kind of tweaked that a little for that morning. And uh, Megan then called you. She couldn't sing to you over the phone, but she called your answering machine and sang uh, this silly little song Bruce used to sing to her. And um, I just appreciate uh, Five Bells for 9-11. It is a beautiful piece 
tells is it three or yeah. four three stories that that need to be told right because we we think so often of those that were lost but there are those that survive that carry a heavy burden to this day and uh, we need not to forget them either so thank you for what you are doing and uh, keep up the good work and enjoy the performance people <laughs> and um, and speaks often after the play and and tell about you there's the fictionalization means something to you Bruce wasn't actually home that morning because he'd gone on duty on September 9th but we felt it was important to share his very every day, you know, um, nobody on September 11th set out to be what people call a hero. Everybody was just doing their job, and some people's jobs involved running into a building. But I remember after one of the performances, you mentioned that when that part comes, it reminds you, oh yeah, I'm not reliving this, this is a story. Right, exactly, yeah. which, is, which is so important because for many years, um, the anniversary approaching was like this big thing looming, this giant looming. And then I realized actually that it's just a shadow. Mm. And I think it's um, what Whitman said about, you know, if you keep facing the sun, the shadows behind you. Wow. And so I always think of it as the capital S-O-N yes. opposed to the little S-U-N. But, you know, if I'm facing the sun, the shadows behind me. Oh, that's beautiful. That's really beautiful and a, and a great way to end. Thank you so much, You're Anne. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Anne's new book is out, Pieces Falling, and right behind us is the memorial to the South Tower, the footprint of the South Tower. I asked Anne, what's the best way for people to buy this? And in other words, what gets the most money back to the author, which is something I care about. And her response surprised me. She said, ask a local bookstore. First of all, that's getting money back into the local economy, which needs it so badly right now. But it also means that the local bookstore is probably going to order more than one copy. So pieces falling at your local bookstore. Lord bless you. My eyes went to a woman who was watching us, and she gave me the thumbs up sign as I was talking about Anne's book. And she came up after we hit stop, and she'd read the book. Anne had actually given it to her as a gift. She was a, a volunteer at the uh, Tribute Center M Museum. And uh, we just had like an hour long conversation about the Lord and faith. We were able to pray together right here. It was just amazing just like the Lord, and just like the Lord to, uh, even when talking about such a dark day, he's, his light is shining, and we're just so grateful for the Lord's presence in our lives. Lord bless you.